Welcome to Redeeming the Time with Carol Marie. Redeeming the Time is a series of purpose-filled insights for you to redeem God's time with fresh revelation from the Lord. Stay tuned for today's message. All right. Well, welcome to Redeeming the Time. And we're so honored to have Faithful Promise Widows Group here. Let's give them a Today on Redeeming the Time, we're going to be talking about the month of Av. We're finishing up the month of Av. Say Av. Av. <laughs> and you know what? Av means father. How about that? See, a lot of times we hear about some of the things that take place in the month of Av, and we, we think, oh, I don't know if I like the month of Av. But you know what? It's the Father's month. It's the Father's month. And if you were writing Av, uh, Hebrew, you start from the right, and then you go to the left. Aleph, you have a line like this, and then you have like this. And like that. Okay? That's Aleph. And that's the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet, or alphabet. And it means strength, or first. Say strength. 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 First. 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 Okay. Then the next letter is the bet, which is the second letter. Now, if you had a dot in the center, it would sound like a but. Say but. But. But, but there isn't a dot in the center. <laughs> okay. So it's a but. 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 So you've got your vowel, which gives it the ah. Uh, 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 but. Uh, 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 okay, so this means house, okay, and this means strength, or first, so the father is the strength of the house, isn't that good? I love Hebrew because not only do you have a shape and a sound, usually, uh, Aleph is really a silent letter, and your sound comes from your vowel, but you also have a uh, word concept and a numeric value. And so it's so precious because it's layer upon layer of revelation. Isn't it exciting? Those of you that have studied Hebrew or are studying Hebrew, it's exciting. So, um, so Father is the strength of the house. This is a month not only to pray for and tap Tap into your Heavenly Father so that there's strength in your house. But pray for your earthly fathers and those that are in position of authority. If you're married, for your husband. Um, if you're um, those that are authority over your church, your city. It's a time to pray for strength in the house. Let's pray for the strength of the house of God. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This is a, a month of the Father. It, it also means to will and to desire. It's a time for us to tap into the will of the Father. <laughs> I mean, doesn't it's almost a duh. Of course we want the will of the Father. But yet, we tend to do our own lives and we don't tap in to the will of the Father. <laughs> you know, it's laying our will aside, isn't it? Yes. yes. Our desires aside, it's a time for us to let ourselves uh, die to self in a time for Him to rise up strong in us. The strength of the Father to be seen in us. Say, I want the strength of the Father to be seen in me. Amen. Amen. It's the fifth month on the Hebrew alpha, uh, calendar, and five represents grace, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It also represents favor, redemption. Mm -hmm. It can represent the fivefold ministry. It can represent freedom. It can represent His hand, His atonement. It's a good month. Mm -hmm. You know, we can reverse the cycle. We can choose to agree with the good report. Amen. Mm -hmm. But because this take, took place in the month of Av, there is a tendency, there's a warfare. Have you noticed there's some warfare going on mm -hmm. where yes. good and evil, there's, no. oh my goodness, and there's confusion going on. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you've had trouble thinking clearly, 
It has to do with the month. Okay? But we can agree with heaven and we can agree with Father God and bring his strength into our house. Amen? Amen. We can kick out the negative report, guys. Yes. We do not have to receive the negative report. It's a choice. Choose this day who you're going to serve. Every day we choose this day who we're going to serve. Who are you going to agree with? Yeah, yeah. And you're going to have to gird up your mind. This house, I need strength in this house. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Tet is the uh, Hebrew letter that's connected to this month. Say tet. Tet. Okay, it looks like this. Okay. It kind of goes like that. Okay, Ted resembles the womb. What are you birthing this month? Wow. Mm. It also represents a twisting, a coiling. It can represent the snake. Didn't we see that in Nov? We saw the negative report and we saw the good report. Are we going to birth the will of heaven, or are we going to agree with the lie? Mm -hmm. Hmm. It's our choice. Mm -hmm. It's our choice. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Simeon, as we heard, is the tribe connected to this month. But you know what it is? We are aligning with God's timetable. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, all, he put all of this into motion before the law ever came. Mm -hmm. So it isn't that we're all of a sudden getting under the law. No. He put in Genesis chapter 1, he put things in the sky, the lights in the sky, and he did it for times and seasons, for appointed times. And what we're doing is we're just aligning with that. You know, if I'm going to pray, I want to hit the bullseye. I don't want to just buckshot and hope I get something. <laughs> I want to hit the bullseye. Mm -hmm. And the more strategies I get from the Word of God, and the more I align with heaven and God's timetable, the closer I get to the bullseye. Amen. Amen. Jesus said sometimes 30-fold, sometimes 60-fold, sometimes 100-fold. I'm going for that 100-fold. Right? Yes. And so it doesn't mean that you're not saved if you don't <laughs> align. But you know what? It makes Father happy when we align with Him. And I like to make Him happy. Yes. So we're, we're in a month of the womb. It's a time of birthing. It's also a time of transition. Say transition. Oh, man. There's black heel marks around that mountain. <laughs> Dragging our feet, you know. <laughs> You know, because we usually don't like change. Even though we go, yeah, I want change. But we're familiar with what we have. And then when change comes, we go, ah! <laughs> transition. It's time for transition. And you know what? When you're birthing that baby, when it's inside, it knows that, that world right there. You know? I heard recently, like, if there were two babies... Uh, twins, and one was believing for the positive, and one was believing for the negative. Mm -hmm. And the one was saying, oh, I can hardly wait. There's a new world out there. And the other was, no, how do you know? How do you know it's out there? No, I'm going to stay right here. You know? <laughs> yeah. And yet that's kind of how we are in life. The bottom line is, do we trust God? Right. If He is the strength of our house, are we willing to trust Him? Are we willing to trust Him? If we're picking up anxiety and fear, we're not trusting Him, guys. We're agreeing with the negative report. And you know what? That negative report, God called it an evil report. Yes. 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 Ouch. We want to agree with the positive report, the good report, the what God says. And see, what they were, they weren't lying. They were looking at the situation. 
They looked at the people. They did look bigger than them. That it did look impossible. But the bottom line that Caleb and, and, and Joshua said, because God said we can take it, then we can take them. That's right. Yes. So when he says, well, in, in, you know, we're like grasshoppers in their eyes. Yeah. Well, did they talk to them? Did they find out that? You know? mm. Now they're assuming that we're grasshoppers in their eyes. Mm. Your situation may look impossible. What you've gone through may look like, well, why did this happen? But you know what? God has a good report. <laughs> And he says, we're more than able. That's we're right. more than able. That's right. yeah. You know, I can do all things. Yes. Amplified said that I, Amplified says on that passage in Philippians 4.13, that I am equipped for everything. I'm empowered. Amen. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 1 says even before he created the world, he loved us. He chose us. Yes, hallelujah. Yeah, he equipped us. He purposed us. In fact, he made the world for us. This, before he even created the world, he chose us. Wow, look how important you are. And yet we look at our situation and we go, oh, it's too big for God. <laughs> really? What are we birthing? What are we birthing? He does not violate our will. So if we choose to believe the negative report yeah. and say it's too big for God, he backs off because he's not going to violate our will. But if we say, Lord, I choose to trust you. Yes. I am not going to look at what I see with my natural eyes. I want to see it from your point of view. Let me see it from your point of view, Lord. Yeah, what are we birthing? This is a time that that stone, topaz, is golden color. And look at it. The, the gold tones represents God's glory being tried in fire. Say, whoo. <laughs> it also represents favor, abundant blessings. But it also can represent idolatry, defilement, and contamination. See? We've got both sides. This is a month to choose who we're going to serve. It's a month to choose to agree with heaven. That's right. It's a month to choose what are we going to birth. Okay? Tamar was our, was our focus, remember? I told you about her a couple of weeks ago before I went to California. And Tamar is the first time in scripture that the word widow is used. And I never liked that passage. I just wanted to skip over that one. Because in, <clears throat> with Tamar, that's when Tamar was um, chosen to marry Judah's firstborn. And his name was Ur. Say Ur. Ur. It was a Ur. <laughs> she thought it was a Ur to marry him. And he was wicked, and so he died. Mm. And so according to custom, his brother, Onan, married her. And he was supposed to bring the firstborn and be accredited to Ur. And Onan said what? Oh, oh man, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> he, thank you very much. <laughs> he was selfish. <clears throat> and he wouldn't allow her to be pregnant. And he died. And so the third son was promised to him. In fact, his name means promise. But Judah sends Tamar home to daddy. According to history, her father was Shem, the, the son of Noah. Mm -hmm. And he was a high priest. <clears throat> and when he sent her home to her father, he said, Remain a widow. And in that translation, when you look to the original Hebrew, it means discarded as in a divorce. Mm -hmm. So a widow can be by death of spouse, it can be by divorce, it can be by abandonment, it can be a woman lacking in a husband, according to the Greek, 
And it also, it means where the head of every man is Christ, the head of the woman is her husband. If she has no husband, God has called the church to be that covering. <laughs> so the very first time widow is used, it's used, discarded as in a divorce. Wow. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. And God used that scripture to set a precedent that it represents any woman that needs to have be covered. Isn't that something? He loves the widow, guys. He loves the widow. So she goes home to daddy, and then when Judah, uh, when his wife dies, and he goes through the mourning, she finds out that he is in Timna, which we have been there, huh, Peggy? And, and shearing the sheep and taking care of that. And, and she positions herself. It says that she takes off the widow's garment mm -hmm. and she positions herself for intimacy with Judah. Now what we get in a spiritual sense here is that Judah offers her provision for the intimacy. And many times in the body of Christ, we just go after God just for what he can give us. Mm -hmm. You know, we're after his hand. Give me this, give me that. We, like we've got a grocery list out, and, and he's trying to fill it. Right. But she asked for his signet ring and his cord and his staff, mm -hmm. his identity. Right. And what we learned from this is that God wants us to go after his identity. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus Christ, the Messiah, was from the lineage of Judah. He's the, from the tribe of Judah. And so what, we're, what we learned from that was we don't accept the shame. See, she could have just accepted the shame and the blame, feeling like she was blamed for the death of the two husbands. But it wasn't her. The scripture truly says that God didn't let them live because they were wicked. Sometimes you're in situations in your life and things have happened and maybe people have blamed you or accused you or even thoughts have come to you like, there must be something wrong with me because these things have happened. But you know what? We've got to get our eyes on Him. We've got to look to Him. There's a lot more to it. We've got to be careful that we're not judging one another and say, oh, well, this has happened to you because mm -hmm. That's right. you know, we, we don't know people's circumstances. And but for the grace of God, we might have done the same thing, you guys. So Jesus says, judge not lest you be judged. You know, there's going to be a time where we judge the angels. But that's in a perfected state. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you know what? If we judge now, we better make sure that our life is in line. Mm -hmm. Now, if you see something, then we can intercede, we can pray. But don't be pointing your finger. You don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't know what, what they've gone through. Mm -hmm. You don't know if you would have acted any differently mm -hmm. if you had gone through the Amen. same kind of thing. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Yep. That's when we cry out for mercy. That's, right. mm -hmm. that's when we cover one another. Love covers one another. That's when we ask the, the father of the house, That's the strength right. of the house, yeah. to be strength to them. Oh, yeah. It's, it's scary to judge. Mm -hmm. It's scary to judge. You know, you, you, you cry out for mercy. You show love to that person. You know, kindness is so powerful. It's just so powerful. God wants us to move in such a way that He just flows through us in such a way that that um, lives are changed because Amen. we're kind yes. and we're loving. Amen. Amen. I was on our trip and <clears throat> I was sharing my story about the In-N-Out Burger. Oh. Um, all the California people will start drooling. <laughs> In and Out Burger is a hamburger place in California that is not in Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
and I was sitting there, and it's the standard thing to you order fries with your milkshake and your hamburger, and you dip your fries in your milkshake. Anybody ever do that? Oh yes, yeah. Yes. The, lot, many people's faces in the group. If you could see their faces, they don't think it's good. <laughs> but I didn't think it was good either. But there's something about that salty sweet combination that was good. But anyway, I was sitting there, and there was a <clears throat> excuse me, a young man next to me. And I just felt led to give him my french fries. And, you know, and just not say anything. Just say, here, honey, have some french fries and put the box of french fries in front of him and the thing of ketchup, you know. Kindness. Mm -hmm. Kindness. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to pull out the four spiritual laws and give him the whole plan of salvation. But if God leads you to do that, then that's what you do. You know, you, you share with him. But sometimes he just sow a seed of kindness. You just be kind. Amen. I was in the restaurant at the airport, and and the young girl that seated me, she she made a comment. She could smell the food cooking, and and she said, oh. You know, and I said, "Are you hungry, honey?" And she said, "Oh yes, I smell all of that." And and she was a hostess, and usually they don't get the tips like those that are servers. And so when I paid my bill, I I had the tip for the for the server, but then I put some cash in my hand and gave it to the little gal that was a hostess. And I said, "Honey, this is for you. Buy you some breakfast." She threw her arms around my neck. Thank you, thank you. Kindness. Kindness. When we have the strength of the house living inside of us, he wants to just nudge us so that we just do whatever he tells us to do. It's so much fun. Yeah, you just watch him touch lives. And you just see what he, what he does. And you talk to people and you love on people. How many of you went to the, my birthday party on the boat? Oh my gosh, we had a good time, didn't we? Oh man, and as we went off, you know, we, we shared the boat with the veterans from the Korean War. Wasn't that exciting? And I'm a military. They would call me a military brat, but I never was. That's not a joke. Adorable military one. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. And so I, so that was so close to my heart because here was all the veterans, and that's what I was raised in the military. So here was all the veterans, and at the end they did Lee Greenwood's song, "I'm proud to be American, oh, proud no. to stand next to you," and a bunch of us all began to stand next to the veterans and in put our hand on their shoulders and pound. And then we noticed that the spouses begin to stand up next to the veterans Aww. that they were sitting yeah. by. We're proud to stand next to you. And, and tears were coming down their faces. Yeah. And when they left the boat, they were shaking our hands, thanking us for honoring them. And we were telling them, thank you for your service. Yeah. Yeah. That's what the father of the house does. That's what the strength of the house does. He just loves through us. <laughs> That's what this month is about. Amen. Lift your hands up and let me bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless each person here. I release the strength of the house. <laughs> I release you, Lord Jesus. And if there's anyone listening to this that does not know you, Lord, we pray that you would make your love known to them. Right, guys? That you would just so cover them with your love that you draw them into the kingdom of light. Lord, we choose the good report, don't we, guys? We choose to believe you, God. We choose to agree with heaven. We choose to not complain, not grumble, but but to pick up praise and trust you with every part of our life. Don't we? Yes. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's give you praise.